Mic check, coffee check. This is Ace. And this is Ivan. And this is No Decaf. <laughs> Titan champions. As the great man Booker T once said, five times. Okay, no, it's been once. Once? Not what? Even, <laughs> we haven't even won once? Oh, once. That's funny. <laughs> One time team champion. Later on, I think later on, I'm going to pick today to have a conversation about how underrated wrestling is as a source for comedy. But we'll leave, we'll, as we're a gonna, source for comedy. We're going to leave it here. It all depends. No, no, no. Wait, don't continue. We're going to leave it here. <laughs> we're going to leave it here. And we're going to continue talking later. There's some things I want to get out the way first. All righty. Um, just before we started, I wanted to send it. I know we just went from laughing now to a bit of a bit of sadness. I wanted to send good energy, love, and prayers to Chrissy Teigen and John Legend. Yes, that cannot be easy. Losing a child at that point in time, at any point in time, yeah, at any point in time, but during this crazy of a year. And and then they put that picture they put up that that shit just breaks your heart. Yeah, it does. But yeah, and pray, black and white filter. Jesus pray, Christ. Prayer and love to and love to them. Prayers and love to them. They need it. So if you have time, send them good messages. Send them good comments. Put put good, good comments Positive on the walls vibes. on 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 Instagram or on Twitter. Do what you can because they 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 need it right now. They need love and 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 good energy right now. I yeah, talk about a crazy way to start uh, to like finish off 2020 because I imagine that it's gonna stay with them. Yeah, that's gonna be that's a scar that they're not gonna be able to heal, at least for a while, or probably ever. That's that's blood right there. So uh. I I had to kind of it's hard to uh counter that that sadness, but I just wanted to get all the, a little, uh, another couple of things I wanted to bring up to help brighten the mood a little bit that's why i saved it for last mm-hmm. is mark cuban and delante west which the, the whole delante west thing is sad but mark cuban finding him and trying to help him out mark cuban is a man of considerable wealth considerable is an, uh, an understatement <laughs> that dude got money money i just hope that it works and that it sticks and that he lets himself i mean I, I I hate to sound like the Debbie Downer, but I'm imagining this isn't the first time. And people people are gonna be like, uh, why would you why would you say this? But it's like you can only people there's only a certain point where you can help somebody unless they don't want help. That's yeah. always that's always my thing. That's the point I was trying to make. Yeah. They're like if if you're willing to go out and above and beyond something for somebody and they're not willing to put in that extra effort now that they're already in the situation where they could get better. Then what? What can we do? What are we doing? Like that. That would be my my thing. But I hope that now now he's in. He's actually here in Florida. He's in rehab. I hope they can pull through and do much better. Like me too. You're talking about a person who made. I think it was like in terms of contracts, he made over ten. 10 or 15 million dollars like i think it's in total throughout his career he made 30 but like those numbers are skewed like people people don't understand how uh how nba contracts work like that's taxed like they'd be like oh you made 33 million no you didn't really make 33 million so you got paid you you huh that's what you got paid that's what your check said but that's not what was deposited into your account that was taxed that also your manager takes a piece from that like it's a it's a lot 33 million a 33 million contract is a 33 million contract but people don't see how it's split but yeah 33 million it was somewhere along along those lines he either made like 30 to 40 million throughout his career and then to see him in the situation that he is right now yeah, it's, it's really those sad. pictures like it is really what sad. did we start seeing these pictures about a year Oof. ago yeah, I wonder why it took so long. But they they were saying that Doc Rivers was reaching out, that um, Mark. It Cuban, could have been that maybe some people were trying to reach out. He just w- wasn't trying to have it. It's it's funny because I we were hearing stories of him actually playing in Dallas and then him having um Mark Cuban had to give him a house, give him a house or gave him a place to stay because he was sleeping in the arena. Like this is an actual story, like this. 
this has been going on for a while. And then I imagine Mark Cuban finally had enough and it was like, yo. And it also, it looks bad because he's in Dallas in the city where Mark Cuban has his team and he used to play for Dallas. Well, it looks good now. It looks, it looks, it looks better. It looks better. Um, he, uh, in my opinion, again, you could only help somebody so much. If I gave you a house and you still out here, or, you know, he could have probably, like, rented him the house or probably, like, lent him the house. Yeah, we don't know. Point is that he tried, know. and now he's trying again, which is good, yeah. which makes us happy. Yeah, so yeah. also prayers and love to Delante West. Hope yeah. that those pictures we've been seeing of you outside. Fully bearded. Hope that stops. Hope, <laughs> and there's no more of that. Yeah, hope, hope you're Don't able to Don't squander this through. opportunity. Yeah. Hey, please. <laughs> you know, and I think uh, he's... um. As a as a player, like uh, th- as the type of player he was, like he could he can find his way onto like a coaching staff or something like that. Not as a not a, like as oh like an assistant head coach. No no no. Like he he could be, he could do like a video coordinator for a team. He could be on a uh, on a team staff. Like he could do a lot of things. Maybe he can be the water boy. Oh, that's not necessary. <laughs> the water boy. My yeah, ma- little ma- kids ma- playing. Ma- 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 see it. All jokes aside, yeah. yeah. Here's in love to Delante West. Definitely, definitely. And then for some more feel-good type things that you just have to talk about, the news, it's not really news, but I guess <laughs> it got loose, got thrown, thrust into the world. <laughs> so from loose to thrust is crazy. Loose to thrust. <laughs> that, uh, this just makes his legend so much bigger, man. Rest in peace. Chad, apparently Chadwick Boseman. Took a pay cut. I guess that that twenty one bridges. Twenty one bridges. For as much as Which we is love not Ch- trending. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for as much as we love Chadwick Boseman, we don't love that movie. It's Correct. not one of his best. But that's not the main thing here. That's not what we're gonna talk about. What we'll talk about is that in that movie, one of his co stars, co stars, uh, Sienna Miller, I believe her name is, was talking about how Chadwick Boseman took a pay cut so that she can get a proper. Paycheck, proper salary, whatever you want to call it for, for however um actors get paid for actresses. Mm-hmm. And I think that's just like we knew he was a stand up guy, but this is just different. This is different. Yeah. He's it's almost sad to to like and it's always gonna that's always gonna be the problem with this world. All the negative bullshit reaches the forefront. Always. Oh, it's always reaches the forefront. We never get to hear this until somebody dies, sadly. We're not able to give you your flowers because we're just not privy to it. We're just waiting. We're easily to clown you because you look like you're losing a lot of weight while you're fighting cancer. We're easily to do all that shit, but we won't. We won't even ask questions about, like, the good shit that you're doing. So I've always liked Shaq. Like, Shaq donates and doesn't, like, it isn't what all this. Like, oh, I'm going to show, I'm going to get on TV and I'm on. <laughs> uh, and I'm going to show everybody that I'm, do, I'm doing some stand-up shit. Like, no, I love listening. I love, like, hearing about about all of this, all of the cool shit that he has done. Me too. Even in death. It makes you feel passing. good. Yeah. Man, makes it, you it, miss it, him more, but it also makes you feel good. Yeah, definitely. He's definitely a king. He was a king. Like, he was. He was a, a king stand-up what, guy. What I like about this it, is that usually when you see, to kick it over to sports just for for an example, mm-hmm. it's not exactly the same thing, but maybe in a way that LeBron would take a pay cut to get somebody that he knows is going to get it done. That's understandable because I, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is that type of talent, it's more tangible to, to, to bet on that, on something that, that, that's going to get a direct result than to say, oh, if I get a star for a movie, I'm going to make money off of it. That's it's a. I'm yeah, not explaining yeah. correct. I don't think I'm explaining. Or maybe the movie will be good if I get a certain person. If I yeah, take a pay it's cut, it's a little different. It's a little different. A little what different. I'm trying to say is that maybe if he took a pay cut, what impresses me is that if he would have taken a pay cut to let's say get who's a big female lead, Angelina Jolie, mm-hmm. to be in the movie, I'd be like, oh well, he's not. I mean, it's still stand up, a very stand up thing to do, but he's also being smart and saying this is Angelina Jolie. I need her to be in this movie. This movie will probably gross more. It may, might be even be a better movie because she's a great actress. Mm-hmm. The Sienna Miller, um, young lady, I've seen her here and there. I don't think she's necessarily this top tier actress, and that's no offense to her. That's just it's not somebody. It's just a reality. And, and maybe it's just not somebody that I'm looking for. But look who he's taking a pay cut for. Like he doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't think about that. Mm-hmm. He just saw this is unfair. 
Let me do what I can. And I think that just makes it even better. It makes it even cooler. Correct. Rest in peace, Chadwick. Yeah, rest in peace, Black Panther. Lordy, lordy, lord. Now let's talk about some Crocs. I would <laughs> never. Jesus Christ. Let yeah. me tell y'all, I love Bad Bunny. Same here. Bad Bunny's great. <laughs> On this show, we love Bad Bunny, but I would not. I just I, don't like Crocs. Yeah, me neither. But tell you what I'm here for. I'm here for the weird collabs. I've always said this. The collabs that maybe, it's not that they don't make sense. It's just that you don't see them coming. <laughs> The Travis think, McDonald's collab. I think. I think. I, I think love this has Jay Z written all over it. Let me explain, because a lot of people are just confused. A lot of people just lost. They're like, "What?" Let me explain. Okay, so Jay Z is a businessman. Nah, he's a business <laughs> man. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, so he has notoriously taken the little guy to do big things every single time. Every single time, regardless of where you see it in his career, he's never gone with the super big brand to do something else. Like, who's Jay Z signed to right now? Puma. Jay Z's a Puma athlete, Puma uh, superstar, whatever you guys want to call it. Isn't the weekend? The weekend, the weekend was or is or one of those two. But I know that now uh, Puma has a bunch of like, Puma's gotten Puma's doing a lot of really good things by signing a lot of good people. But point is, Jay Z has had Reeboks, Jay Z has had Pumas. He has never worked with Jordan. He has never worked with Nike, unless there's like a special collab type of joint. But he's always worked with the small company to do a type of collab with well let's use the word the smaller company yeah 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 because Again, for it's example, not a small... i don't think new uh, new i don't know why i was gonna say new balance i don't think reebok is a small oh, no, 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 company no, no, no. but at the at the, 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 the nike at the time yeah exactly reebok it was um uh, reebok was not one of the uh, one of the biggest like reebok is still reebok even to this day yeah reebok's a known brand but it ain't any adidas it ain't new um nike it ain't jordan so it's the same thing. Um, Jay-Z has always done this where he, when he collabs or does a partnership with a certain company, I'm thinking of the drink and I can't. Well, look what he did with uh, with Armand. Whatever that shit is Yeah, called, whatever the case. Ace of Spades. Ace of Spades uh, was a tiny company. Which is not my cup of tea. It isn't. But then he collabs with it and eventually says, hey, there's a lot of money in this and buys it out. Or has majority share, whatever the case may be. Yeah. But he's done this on a consistent basis. Uh, I think he even did a Sprite commercial. So what you're saying is that he'd rather go with the obscure. Not with the obscure. He thinks that it's a beggar. Like, this is online. You guys can find this. It's like a, it's not a whole documentary, but it's an explaining the business around, like, how smart Jay-Z is around business. But he's oh, he's never, ever worked with a bigger company because it doesn't, it doesn't, you can never see the growth when it comes to big companies. Like there's it's 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 marginalized. Like it's very like minuscule. Oh, um, Coca Cola is gonna uh gonna what's it called? Coca Cola is going to get Jay Z and they're gonna do a collab. Okay, that's cool. But those numbers, there's like a small bump in numbers. Jay Z rather have a bigger impact on smaller companies when they've never seen like the growth. And I guess that always represents. That's always been able to represent his impact on just culture in general. So it's it's cool to have a Coca Cola, what's it called? Oh, I have a Coca Cola ad. The ad made them an X amount of money, uh, X amount of dollars. But if he goes to Puma or if he goes to us, uh, well, Sprite is a Coca Cola company now. But um, a Seven Up or is it Seven Up? I don't even know. I think anymore. it's Seven Up. I think Sprite belongs to Pepsi. I think Sprite belongs. Is. Whatever the case may be, he goes to a smaller, let's say Fanta. He goes to Fanta, and Fanta has never sold as much Fanta as as, had, as it ever. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like you've um when you when uh, you're able to go to a small company or a company that's smaller and have a great impact, and you're able to show your work and just see how the numbers have jumped because you were there. Yeah, I was wrong. Sprite belongs to Coca Cola. Yeah, I, I had a feeling Sprite um, belonged to Coca, but it, it, it's again, it's neither here nor there. Yeah. Point is, Jay Z has always done this. So the fact that Bad Bunny has gone and collabed with Crocs, it's still crazy. That's a uh, there's might not be a crazier sentence 
in 2020. Than Bad Bunny and Crocs? I, uh, I didn't think that Travis Scott and McDonald's was that far off of a, what's it called? You have a superstar company working with a superstar uh, with a superstar uh, artist. Yeah, but it's things you don't usually see. What? The, 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 the McDonald's? The big, the big top tier world famous rapper is usually going to go go with uh, a, a shoe deal, a clothing deal. Uh, well, he already has. He already has. Deal. He already has a uh, Jordan. Travis Scott has the Jordan. I know, no, yeah. I know, but why not come out with another one? You know, you know what I mean. Like, you, oh, he, he has. Just, he can, he continues. I'm not to put saying that it's. He weird. just put out the fours. It's not that Final it's mistake. weird. It's just that it's unexpected. The McDonald's collab. Oh, I didn't think it's unexpected at all. I thought it was. Because like, oh, wow. if you if you just think but about it, in a it, good way, in a good way. Because like I said, I'm always here for those strange collaborations, like this one, like Bad yeah. Bunny and Crocs. But this <laughs> still funny. The, the, funny this type. this has um, Jay Z's blueprint all over it. It makes the most sense. It's, yeah. It, it makes the most sense because Bad Bunny's a weird dude. Like, Bad Bunny paints his nails. Bad Bunny has different styles of haircut. His glasses are always strange. He has a, he wears a lot of colors. I think it's the most on-brand thing that he could possibly do. Like, he could have gone to New Balance, and I don't think New Balance would have gotten the benefit out of this. Like, but Crocs, Yeah. Because people love Crocs. Crocs has like a cult fan base. I hate them, but Crocs, Crocs have a fan base. Like, and this, the way that this blow up, I imagine that they've never seen numbers like this. They'll be like, we sell, well, but we don't in sell a while. Like this. Yeah, maybe in a while. We don't sell like this. They've been stagnant. I haven't, I haven't. They sold out in 15 minutes? Wasn't that the news? Yeah, it was something like that. Yeah. That, that's crazy. It dropped, and then all of a sudden you saw everything was sold out. Crocs is. I think me and you got to do a collab with Tim's. Tim's. Wait, let me finish. <laughs> and, with, and with New Era, but specifically on the navy blue Yankee cap. Nah, we can't do that. <laughs> if Jay Z can't get a can't get those a are era, classics. We cannot mess I don't with say that. Can't, but yeah, we're, we're we're never touching. I'm never touching. You know, I've never worn a pair of Tim's before. <laughs> really? I've never owned a pair of Tim's. <coughs> They'd be like, yo, give me your New York card. <laughs> no, you, you you do try hard to get it revoked. Yeah, I do. I try my best to get it revoked. Well, I don't know why. The most beautiful thing in the world is to be born in New York. Just making fun of New York New York City is funny. We're just we're just laughing stocks in, in certain ways. I love Oh my, no, I see that. I see I that. love my I love my city, but you're never gonna get me to you're, ne- <laughs> you're never gonna get me to a next game. <laughs> oh, by the way, we're um we're winning in the playoffs though. Yankees. So shout out to them. Applause to them. Yes, definitely. Uh, don't ever say again that nobody can take you to the next game because I would go to the next game. That's fucked I up. Would go We're to Knicks a- fans, and you just said, and you just said the most blasphemous, blasphemous thing in the world. I don't want to see my Stephen team lose. A. Smith. I don't want to see my. Yeah, oh, I don't person, see my- it's, it's fly on TV, but in person, you draw yeah, the line. Yeah, in in person on TV, it's okay for y'all to lose. But, but what about all the free drinks? <laughs> free drinks. Look at what gets you excited. <laughs> free drinks. I don't care about your damn free drink soccer. Can y'all win a game? <laughs> I want y'all to win. Uh, I want y'all to get some dubs, yo. Like, this shit is ridiculous. But yeah, it's Bad Bunny, Crocs. <laughs> excellent. 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 Yeah. Um, excellent collab. The way, again, whoever, there's certain people in certain uh, teams, whoever thought of that, if it was his idea, you're a genius. But if it wasn't his idea I, and it was somebody else, I get the feeling that it was that there was no... Uh, Third person, in terms of the idea, there was obviously other people involved, but in terms of the original idea, it was, I think it was either Crocs or Bad Bunny himself. Either they saw him wearing them a lot, or he <laughs> said, I wear these too much to not do, or I love these, and, and it's crazy to not do something with them. That's crazy. <laughs> and it's always good to, that's why I've always loved when uh, celebrities, or just anybody who gets endorsement deals or does these brand deals with Things that they actually believe in, things they use, things they wear. It it, it remains authentic. Exactly. Exactly. It, it and it doesn't sound like you're trying to sell me something. Cause that's always the that's always where the line is drawn. Like, are you really using this or are you just trying to sell me on something? Makes it good. Alrighty. New music. New music. A, A lot. lot. <laughs> yeah, we're on the same page today. Yeah, we are. <laughs> a lot has dropped. A lot, a lot, a lot. Holy crap. Same page, man. I keep telling you that I'm <laughs> that I'm broke. <laughs> I, I would love minimum wage right now. I am broke as hell. But 
You know who's not broke? <laughs> Bryson Tiller, who dropped Anniversary in stores now. Who else? Burr, 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 burr. I need an air horn. <laughs> who else dropped? So it's uh, Bryson Tiller, 21 Savage, and Metro Boomin dropped. West Side Gun dropped. Correct. DJ, Sna- DJ Snake dropped a live concert, I guess, or a live mix. Meg dropped a like single with Young Thug. Uh, Giveon, who was on Drake's last album, dropped. I think Smoke Dizzle dropped. Hey, yo, my friend. Yo, Bon Jovi dropped. <laughs> YG dropped. YG dropped. It's YG 400. Let me stop. 400. Uh, they did a Ella Fitzgerald. That's some, that's crazy. She's great. Yeah. Shout out to the legend. Uh, Halsey dropped. Maniac. I like Halsey. Halsey B. Hal, I've, I've, I've said my take. I've shared my take here about all these girls, right? What? That they all sound the same? That they're sending the same person over and over to different labels that just happens to look different? No, you haven't said that take. Please. Well, I can't elaborate too much because i don't know them by names because like, once again i'm not this is not the music i'm looking for so i, I could care less but every but, time you but hear name a, name a couple like all these women that collab with g easy they all <laughs> sound the same and it's always g easy on the song with them but G-Eazy beba does, rexa beba it's beba rexa i think halsey is one of them i think G-Eazy i could be wrong Halsey is one of them uh, they I'll all you. sound the same do you think so yeah uh do do uh, you do you think do do a lipa also, I, I don't know. I don't have to hear her. I don't know. Like, I know who she is, but I haven't really heard her music like that. There's a, there, uh, there's a couple of, the, uh, but I do, I do understand what you, you're you, saying. That voice. There's I, a certain voice that you kind of like. <clears throat> and it kind of like, and I guess it's the times. They know that it does numbers, so why not sign them? I hate to see. I, I feel like they're all the children of. What's the name of that girl that did that song with B.O.B.? Uh, Ashley Williams? They're all her children. But it's funny because Ashley Williams is from Paramore. And she's... That's fine. They're all, her, a, they're all her children. <laughs> they're, all, they're all still her children. They're, they're, I feel like they're all going for like that sound. Just mixed in hip-hop. And Ashley Williams is out here just being a rocker. and Being dope. But yeah, so mad new music will definitely... do research on that so I could come and like really explain to you what I mean. No, nah, don't worry. But I do. But the cool thing is that I understand exactly what you're saying. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. I think you do. By the look in your face, I think you do. And it's they funny, all sound the same. And it's like the same voice. And it's funny. Tweaked a little. But okay, so this has been done in hip hop. This has been done in hip hop. This has been done in basketball. This has been done in a lot of areas. And let me explain so I could further your point. Remember Biggie? Yeah. Biggie. Like, there's certain people that are. Biggie's children or people that would sound like Biggie and they try to replicate it. Remember Shine? Absolutely. Shine was signed by Diddy. Shine sounded like um like a Biggie. I wouldn't say Biggie clone. I'd say his style and the way his voice was like super deep and just like 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 he was a a Biggie prototype. Let's call it like just to say not say clone because clone could be seen as disrespectful. Uh. There was another rapper like that too. I remember he had a song. I forget his name, but I remember, Gravy. I remember he had a song with Beanie Man, and he sounded a lot like Biggie. And I would always think, like, wow, he sounds like Biggie. I was like, twelve. Gorilla years. Black. That's the one. Yep. Gorilla Black. Gorilla Black also sounded like Biggie. Uh, there, yeah, and it's just been done in business. Like you find, you find what works and try to replicate it, and it's okay. This is not a bad thing. There's just you get to see who is. Who is the better part of who? So I'll, I'll explain this in basketball terms. After Michael Jordan was Michael Jordan, we saw a lot of people try to replicate or try to find the Michael Jordan mold. That's where you got a Kobe Bryant from. 6'6", six, six, lean, mean, like 5% body fat, could jump out the gym. Like Vince Carter comes out, 6'6", six, six, lean, mean, jump out the gym with a shot like you can you can see how they they do it and it's the same thing in in every industry when you see what works you try to replicate it then uh, same thing uh well we could even take this to lebron and the big three. Oh, the big three won championships they won back-to-back championships okay that seems to be what's working 
Let's everybody try to replicate it. Everybody gets a big three. Oh, snap. They they disbanded. No more big threes. Now everybody has a big two in the NBA. Currently, every, te- every team has a dynamic duo. And it's just the way it works. So the fact that... Uh, what was the original? I completely forgot. What was the, the 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 female? Oh yeah, the the, the female the, the female singers ladies. like Halsey. Um, I'm so you know. And the funny part is that the fact that they can't replicate certain people, it just kind of like adds to their legacy. Like, who you know who came to mind when you said Biddy Man? I was like, there is no other Sean Paul. Like, I don't think you'll ever be able to replicate. And Sean Paul, uh, Sean Paul's a legend. Like, in my, in my, in the way my brain works. I love Sean Paul, but Sean I, but Paul, Benny Man might be more legend. Oh no, no, G, uh, yes, that is correct. But I think Benny Man is a legend within his reggae dance hall. But that's what Sean Paul does. I think he Sean branches Paul out a bit a, more. Exactly. I think Sean Paul is a legend, regardless of where he drops in. Because Sean Paul has given Farruko a big record. Uh, a big, uh, uh, I don't know if I it's on number one. Jay a, a, he a gave, he might have given a J Balvin one. We have, we would have to confirm that he's had top, like top records in hip hop. Like he's had R and B records with Keisha Cole that are like, when are you gonna give it up to me? Like Sean Paul, and one of these days we're gonna have that conversation about just underrated dudes that don't ever get brought up enough. And I think Sean not Paul is a that, legend that I does feel not like get brought up. Give enough. me the light, might be one of the best songs of give all time. Give me the light, give me the one. light. Doesn't get the love. Dun, dun. Dun, dun, That's dun, dun, one of the oh hardest. Songs. I love that song. That song doesn't get the respect that it deserves. That's a great song. Um, so fine is one of my favorite songs of all time. Yeah, like Sean Paul, yo. And I can't, I, 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 now I'm just like going through like the catalog, the catalog in my mind. And Sean Paul got some shit. Sean Paul might be a hard out in verses. He might be. Sean Paul might, it might have a quick 10 that'll get a lot of dudes the fuck out of here. <laughs> God damn, I didn't even know he had that much. <laughs> oh, he has that in the took. <laughs> in the took. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, but back to the main to- um to the main point. Yes, there I understand exactly what you're saying with a lot of uh people a lot of industries just kind of signing the same girl that kind of has the same flow, same style, same cadence, same uh voice. Same all that. Yeah, and then they seem to work well with the same artist because <laughs> it's it's just the way it is. And there's so many great um women. And it's not only Jeezy, by the way. Halsey does the same exact thing with Post Malone. She does the same exact thing with uh with Machine Gun Kelly. Like So it's all the she, white <laughs> I'm so fucked up. That's not what I mean. I'm not racist, I promise. I'm just Yeah, I think you so know what I, I think Halsey's also the smartest one because Halsey works very well with uh with all of them. She like she does really good music with all three of them. But all three of them have this hip hop rockish style. And then, like, you have the spectrum. So you have g being the most hip-hop one. And then you have Post Malone, which is half hip-hop, half rock. And then you have Machine Gun Kelly, who has branched out from hip-hop rock to now he's hip-hop, pop, rockish type of thing. And I, and I, uh, that means no disrespect. That doesn't mean Machine Gun Kelly don't got bars because Machine Gun Kelly can rap. Like, <laughs> let it be known. Machine Gun Kelly can rap. But... I think that's how he's um he he's he's fond of specific lane that I don't think anybody else um occupies and Machine Gun Kelly is like dope at that. But that's a good point you brought up. It's all it's all like I have no other word. All the Caucasians, all the whites. I'm not trying to be racist. I'm just trying to discriminate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just Asshole. kidding. It's jokes. It's all jokes. Um, uh, we have we do have really. It just makes me appreciate the other singers we have, like SZA. Like when you think about SZA and how great she is. Umi, like, there's so many little, and, and, and then there's, like, the more underground, like, Umi, like, that maybe not a lot of people know, that just sing. Armani Caesar. Armani Caesar's a rapper. I, I, I apologize. <laughs> I thought of what and she raps good, too. Yeah, I apologize. But, no, but I um I thought of, I thought of an underground artist, but uh, Armani Caesar came to my mind. Uh, Jesus Christ. But there's, uh, there, you are correct. There's a lot of people that are just kind of, like, they fall by the wayside because they don't get a lot of love. Like and we mentioned, G- Giveon had one really good record on a Drake song, on a Drake album. And now he he just dropped a project that I would like everybody to support. 
And he like yeah, he's um he he's an interesting he's an interesting individual. So I wanna I wanna hear what this music sounds like. We're gonna have a lot of music to talk about next uh yeah, we are. next if episode, we even get through all that music. Because the thing is that what we usually well, what I usually do anyway, I gotta speak for myself, is that I'll go for example, I know for a fact I'm going through that West Side album the West Side album. twice. Yeah. So uh I'm probably gonna listen to Bryson Tiller's album. I'll listen to West Side's album. I'll listen to I'm gonna listen to a lot of a lot of things. I like I love Bon Jovi. Like it's weird, but like people are like Bon Jovi. Gonna, like I'm, I love Bon Jovi. I probably listen to well. I, I don't listen, wanna I, I don't wanna get specific with what I'm gonna listen to, but I'm gonna try to get through all of it. Correct. Alrighty. Uh before we go too far. Yes. We are gonna dip our foot into the other industry, which is music uh NBA? TV, um well no, there's not really much to talk about in the NBA. I mean it's, Well, um, Doc Rivers got signed. Let's say that. Oh, in, that's true. Yeah. Let's go ahead, let's go mention ahead. that. Um, Doc Rivers is signed to the Philadelphia 76ers, which is definitely a. It's a plus. It's definitely a plus. Like, there's few teams, and it's funny because they had Mike D'Antoni. Let's go guy. ahead. <laughs> a little late, but applause is definitely in order. But they had Mike D'Antoni as the original like head coach. I'm not gonna spend too much time on this, but they had a. Uh, they had him, and then they saw that Doc Rivers became free, and they were like, nope, give him give him the bag. <laughs> the whole entire bag, please. He's a top five um, head coach. And the fact that Steve Ballmer had to talk to all these dudes, and they all said, get him out of here, is a little crazy to me. Um, but that just means that maybe Ty Lue and or Sam Cassell are going to be the next head coaches, which is dope because Ty Lue is a championship head coach. He won with Cleveland, with LeBron. Uh and so that gives that still gives them championship pedigree. Um, I imagine that that might have been the the because Steve Ballmer's smart. Like you don't get to be a billionaire without being smart. Like that's just I just believe that's that's the way it is. But he had him as an assistant coach, and I think just in case uh, Doc Rivers fucked it up, and he was able to like okay, but we have this guy already signed. Let's just promote him into head coach. So. I I hope both parties figure that out. I hope Ty Lue does become the head coach to the what's it called? Uh, I hope that the Lakers win. Yo, Lakers, Lakers destroyed Miami in Game One. <laughs> what a ass whooping! What yo, Jesus Christ! But anyways, pray, uh, prayers, and I hope that he makes the best out of it for Doc Rivers and seventy uh, and the Seventy Sixers. I hope that he's able to get Ben Simmons to be uh, the best possible Le- lebron clone or lebron prototype that he could possibly be Le- hope that he makes him work on this shot consistently because if ben simmons could shoot this this league is over ben simmons becomes a top probably 10 player if he has a jump shot joel Embiid, if you're um and you guys formulate a team and they got a great squad like al harford they got yeah they got a great squad uh it's just um having somebody to put all those pieces together and making them great but yeah uh Lakers laid the smackdown one by eighteen. Yes, they did. But there they was, won the, by eighteen, the, and but it there was even... a point though to give a little bit of respect to Miami. There was a point where the lead was bigger, and they managed to. Cut oh it down yeah, a but bit. that's the um, it's it's what you call garbage time, like the they, yeah they they take the foot off the gas and they allow things to get. I'm serious, but at one point they were up by like what twenty seven. I think it was more than that. I think it was like 30, 32. Yeah, so it's like... uh, I don't know. You go out and do the arithmetic. I know there's somebody listening going, no, that's not it. Go do the the arithmetic yourself. The arithmetic. (laughs) (laughs) It's But yeah, it's it's sad because now, like, due to injury, they have, like, a couple people who kind of got banged up last game. Jimmy got hurt. Bam got hurt. And then Drogic, I don't think, at the age of 35, I think he, he got hurt, hurt, hurt. What is, it, what is it you call this? Victory juice. That's oh, good today. <laughs> it's good today, yeah. Uh, it feels great today. Game two is today, I believe, right? Game two is today. And, yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know I don't know what's going to happen. Them, them being banged up is a problem because now we're in sweep territory. And, like, ESPN changed their, like, their, their uh, what's it called? The odds. And then they're, like, they're 99 LeBron points. is really about to do it with three different teams. Correct. It just it just adds to his um level of greatness. What's on your mind? I I don't think it adds to his level of greatness. I think it adds. I think it puts a visible notch where I guess you, it makes it tangible for you to say, "Look, he is a champion." But LeBron, 
in my head and in my eyes, LeBron is so great, he can't possibly get any great anymore. I mean, to me, he is the pinnacle right now. It's going to be, I mean, you know what it is? Um, I, I think that he needs to do uh, three more things for him to sum, uh, to cement himself as a as what he is, as um as the full. Like, I already think he's Mount Rushmore, the best small forward of all time. Like, he's been take that from uh, from homeboy from Larry Bird, in my opinion. Or it, it depends. Some people might say, oh, Larry Bird was a power, was a power forward. He played power forward, too. But most of the time, it was him. Kevin McHale was on the power forward side. He played small forward, and then Robert Parrish at center. But LeBron has to do these last three things. I think he needs to pass Kareem, which I think he can, in I scoring. I think he can, too. In, in scoring, uh, so he he'll be. I think he's also the gonna be the only, first player ever to average forty thousand uh, to get not average. I'm I'm sorry to get forty thousand points, ten thousand rebounds, and ten thousand assists. He's also the first. He already was the first player ever to get the assist uh, the assist award. Like he he averaged the most assists this season. At his, um, uh, what's it called? For the first time in his career, he averaged more than ten assists. So it's like he does all of that. And he gets those two things and then finally play with his son. And I think he's done. I think once he plays with his son, at least one season with his son. I think that's what he's going to do. Yeah. I think he would have retired otherwise. Not now, but maybe let's say, let's call it in three years he might have retired. Yeah. But I think he's waiting to play at least one season with his son. Just one season and then I think I think he's um, officially done. And what a what a career. Speaking like, about uh, his son, about Bronny, do you, what cases do we have of, the son, the offspring, beating the father in terms of just we have, how good you are. We have I, we really it's rarely any. It rarely happens, right? Rarely like, happens, but we have one, and it's not in basketball. Well, we have two actually in basketball. Well, three. Oh, well, you went from none to three. Well, a three, a, a two or three in basketball. One that is an officially like hands down, which is Ken Griffey Jr. Okay, and then back to basketball. Basketball would be uh, Al Harford. Tito Hofford only played one season. Al Hofford has played already, I think, more than 10 seasons in the NBA and has been an all-star, has been a, a piece for a contender. Fine, let's, let's, put, let's do it like this. Let's call it for people that we know are great. Like how we knew, how we know Michael Jordan will, uh, is great, but his sons don't play ball because it's just not that great. But I don't even think Bronny's going to be able to do uh, was going to be able to do what LeBron does. I think Bronny's going to be a nice one or two guard that will probably get shit done. You think Austin Rivers plays better than his dad did? No, Doc was a problem when he was in when he was in when he played for the Hawks. You think Lonzo plays better than his dad? I don't know because I we we don't have any information. So my odds would be yes, they're all better than Lavar. <laughs> I don't know because he uh, Lavar was never in the league, so it's like, what can we do? I usually don't put much stock in. Oh, the, that's his offspring. He's gonna kill it. No, because but it's, I feel like there's different a, there might be something different about Bronny. I no, I'm not saying he's going to be he's going to be uh I'm not I'm not saying that he's going to be whatever. I'm saying I'm that I'm saying he's going to be close. You think he's going to be close? Okay, maybe not is close. Is that here's close? Is, uh, close is one of a kind. Okay, fine, but listen to this. Here's the problem. I don't think he's going to be his dad. I just think to get somebody like LeBron James there has to be like a there's a gap a gap of like at least two or three generations before you see somebody come in to the NBA that's that good. Mm -hmm. So LeBron is just so good, right? Mhm. Mm like, if you measure it, it's going to sound so weird. If you measure it in height, mm -hmm. I'm trying to give you just something you can visualize. If you measure it in height, and LeBron James is as good as the, this is going to sound so weird, is as good as the uh, as the Empire State Building is tall, right? Mm -hmm. And let's say that most other players, to reach the NBA, you really just got to be like a normal average, maybe 10 to 15 story building. Mm -hmm. If Bronny can be somewhere in between a normal and just, it's just, it's so much to reach LeBron James that even if you don't get there, you'll still be a great player. Because it's that LeBron James is out of this world good. Like, it's different. So to even, maybe not even come close, but even if there's a, a, a considerable gap between Bronny and, and, and LeBron James, mm -hmm. I think Bronny is still considered better than a lot of other people. If that's how it goes down, I'm saying. It would still be considered better than a lot of people. Oh, yeah, but I, like... That that's maybe like a, a Rus like a Russell like a Russell uh, Westbrook. Well, Russell Westbrook is a Hall of Famer, but he's not LeBron James. I'm trying to tell you. Oh, okay, no, no, definitely. But again, again, that was my point. LeBron James is a one of a kind. MJ is a one of a kind. 
Magic was a one of a kind. Like, there's only, there's few people like LeBron. It's funny. They've always said that. Like, if you have, if you're known by one, by one name, by like one. It's greatness. One. Yeah. Like MJ. But that's not or Michael. Well, or my, Michael. Michael. Michael Jordan might be the greatest. Uh, what's it called? Like I, I said. I don't know anybody. Well, I guess that's true. But I don't know anybody who called Michael Jackson by either Jackson or Michael. He was always just Michael well, Jordan. Okay, so you have Jordan. Tyson was. Tyson was Which Tyson. So the, the problem was with Michael, yeah. About the, Michaels. the greatest Michaels, yeah. Um, full circle. But Jordan, Kobe, Kareem, Magic. It's usually for, um, when it comes to basketball, if you're known by your first name, then you're, you are great. So, I mean, I'm eight, Car- so championship. No. Sit down. <laughs> you're not part you of this conversation. want to back me up. Kareem, Magic, Kobe, Larry, like whenever those names come up, Michael, in terms of basketball, you know exactly who we're talking about. Their names don't have to be unique to be uh, what's it called. But yeah, it just is. Um, and then people want to be like Kawhi. Yeah, Kawhi, because his name is weird, not because. No, no, don't hate. <laughs> All right. Such but yeah, so it's. uh, So that's that's the way it is. Well, um, I don't think I think he could become an all star. I think it could even become a great like he like uh, Bronny. Bronny could eventually, like I, again, I don't know the trajectory of his like playing time, but he even has a chance to be like really, 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 really good. Be a perennial all star for like an ill amount of time. I think he. I think right now, I think he's like six two, six three right now. I don't. I still don't understand what's the science behind that. How it is that two kids can grow up. I don't just, you know, maybe not poor, but they get by Uh and just have all this talent. And then when the father becomes this powerful, all the money in the world. It's nature versus nurture. And can put him in basketball camps and get him the best coaches, the best trainers. It just doesn't, it's not the same. Hunger, hunger and ambition and. I guess so. Yeah, that's probably what it is. Those things are like uh, the the word you hate, palpable. (laughs) Those things are tangible. You can't take that from somebody. Well, they're not. LeBron tangible, James has had a, a like his 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 childhood wasn't like the greatest childhood ever. Like, but that just fuels to what LeBron James is today. Like that adds to it. So it's like, yeah. And we this basketball take has been long enough. But yeah, uh, come back, ladies. Come back. Come back for some. But yeah, for uh, some I think ace. I think LeBron is gonna win his next title. I hope that Miami Heat put up a. A better fight than game one. And I do think so, because I think Spolstra is a, is a genius. But You think he's a genius? Okay, no, I'm not even going to know. I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm egging you on. Okay, I think, no, he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a top seven coach of the NBA. Okay. Let's, let's say that. I'll say seven, because putting a top ten in a league that only has 30 teams is weird. Call the women back. Come back, ladies. <laughs> no, but you got to whisper it. Come back, ladies. <laughs> You're a weirdo. ASMR, I have been joining the league. The hell out of here. Joining the league. Joe Ugly ass out of here. Joining See, yo, the I league. I always tell the women that you're good looking, that you have money, and you just stay in the But you me. stay so you stay whispering. <laughs> they like that. No, they don't. You guys like this. No, no, they don't. ASMR A's champion. So let's get into some other news. Jamie Foxx in Spider Man. In a different, what do we? I don't want to call it. Not a different role. It's not a different role. No, no, that's not what I was gonna say. I just we can't call this a different franchise. It's still Spider Man. It's just in a different. What do we call this? A different world. A new, no, it's a new. Uh, he's still part of the MCU. They're just bringing him back to play. Like they, he, he's part of the MCU and he's doing um the Sinister Six. Now, if you don't know what the Sinister Six people who love Marvel, you guys know. It's the group of uh, the group of enemies that um, get together to beat Spider Man. You have Vulture, who was played by Michael Keaton in the in the last movie, and for, uh, no, in the first movie, right? Michael Keaton um, plays Vulture. Uh, originally, they have Electro, they have Shocker, they have Mysterio, Mysterio who was played by Jake Gyllenhaal in the last movie. Uh, if I'm not mistaken. I can't remember. I can't really remember. Oh, they have a Doc, a doc Ock. And again, I'm, I'm I'm kind of drawing a blank on uh, the other the other two, but I think you've already named like five. Rhino. Rhino's you also five already. It's Sinister Six. But you so it's five. So you were missing it's one. Electro Shocker, Rhino, Vulture, Doc Ock, 
Doc Ock, and then I'm missing one. Scorpion? Scor- um, it's either Scorpion or the alligator or the uh, lizard, dude. Which I can't remember. Um, But yeah. For you guys to understand what we're saying, when Andrew Garfield, obviously you guys know that there's been three Spider-Mans now. It's been Tobey Maguire. Correct. Andrew Garfield. Correct. <clears throat> And Tom Tom Holland, <laughs> him, <laughs> and you probably should say it like that because it's funny. Yeah. <laughs> Every time there's a new Spider-Man, the world gets rebooted, so it's like a new world almost. Correct. But when Andrew Garfield was Spider-Man, which is our favorite Spider-Man, correct. Jamie Fox. So you'd think that once it got rebooted to Tom Holland, they'd everything would switch up, but no, they're they keeping, bring back they're bringing Jamie back Jamie Fox. Fox. I actually. The same thing with Margot Robbie and being Harley Quinn. But the thing is that she's perfect for that role. That's that's, th- for me, that's where it differs. I, I don't think, and this is no hate to Jamie Foxx. I love Jamie Foxx. I don't think he's perfect as Electro. I think he's good. Mm-hmm. Maybe even more than good. Whereas Margot Robbie is perfect for Harley Quinn. Correct. I think Margot- So I see that more. Like I understand that bringing, uh, it getting rebooted and her coming back. Because they're like, we're not going to find anything better. But Jamie Foxx is Electro. I don't know. I mean, I guess... I mean, cool. Uh, there's nothing. I'm, yeah, there's not. There's, I'm going to watch negative. it anyway. It's yeah. not a negative. I'm going to watch it anyway. It's not a negative. Um, they it just surprised me a little. I think mm. Jonah. Uh, they bought back this guy to, to do Jonah Jameson too. I think uh, he was in the last JK, movie. J.K. Simmons. Yeah, he's great. J.K. Simmons he's is great. awesome. Whiplash. That's all. That's all. All you need is one word. Just watch Whiplash, and you'll know enough if about. If you haven't JK. watched Whiplash, do yourself a favor. Go watch Whiplash. Yeah. But yeah, so Jimmy Fox is electro. It's just it was interesting when I read it. But I'm definitely watching it anyways. This is not a, it's not a, it's not a slide. It was just weird. Yeah. Like it just came out of nowhere, and they're like, "Oh wow, they're really keeping them." Okay, cool. And they they were probably surprised. Um, they were probably impressed by uh the way that. For Jamie Foxx is a great actor. Yeah. So, definitely, shout out to Jamie Foxx and shout out to the whole MCU. Well, we'll we'll see because there, there's going to be a lot of new developments. And the thing is that Disney wants to keep the hype train going, so they release things like this. They they're not interested in not. Cause like okay, it's like twenty twenty has put a lot of dent, like a lot of blocks, but they still need to promote everything. Yeah. So things like this coming out is just Disney doing Disney's um type Disney type shit. So, I mean, they might tap me for Doc Ock. So they're never tapping you for Doc Ock. <laughs> the balls. They're never tapping. They're never tapping. <laughs> You're not accessible, bro. They're never tapping you is funny. I don't want to get funny. tapped by anybody. Don't, don't say that shit to me again. Oh, no, you love me. you love to get tapped. Not- <laughs> <laughs> See, this, this, this is what we fight. <laughs> oh man. Oh, uh, but okay. So <clears throat> now on to some funnier. Well, not funnier. This is actually sadder. Saddest TV moments. Are we? But I think the is okay. Let's do like this. TV let's or let's do TV. Let's, let's let's look for TV because I with well, movies it's easy. I feel like movies are more prone to getting you into your feelings, and we gotta get a reaction out of the audience and all that. Bullshit. Right, it's funny because I think uh, TV has an easier time of doing that because TV allows but you. But it's to kind drawn of out. It's drawn out, and I can't have you. And usually, the problem is that it's harder for you because you gotta think about a single episode where it happened. You can't just name a show, for example. Oh See no! See where it might get harder. I I mean I guess I mean you're right. It's just um the 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 way that I think of for TV is that TV ha- has you fall in love with these characters due to longer periods. Oh, of that, time. yeah, no, absolutely. So it's it's easier to set up a, a a scene where to cry. I mean I know where exactly where you're gonna go. Where? Fresh Prince of Bel Air. When um I thought about that, but I wasn't what I was gonna use first. The, I, I thought you were gonna use that first. To be honest, I well I am using um because because it's the I thing. Love Fresh Prince. Why do we always go to that? Because because the thing is that there's two separate scenes. You like the other one. I like the one with his dad. The one with his dad is... Oh, wait, wait. Why doesn't he love me? That one? That one. With, with, with James Avery. Well, James Avery was, was there throughout the whole entire show. Exactly. Rest in peace. But but that made you cry? Yes. That was one of the one of the sadder moments. Uh, For me, it was... And it's the only time that I've ever been actually close to crying. Even close. Is cool. when he... Um, the coolest When he gave the earth. pills to... <laughs> To to um call to Carl. Well, he didn't give it give it to him, but Carl, Carl went to his locker and got the pills. Yeah, to me, that was a sad episode. That was definitely a sad episode. Uh, that, sadness. That episode, I think that episode was actually sadder. I think I win that. 
You think your episode I, is sadder than my episode? I, you know what's funny? I think everybody goes to your episode because your episode is sad. Everybody who thinks about a sad episode in the Fresh Prince goes to that yeah. moment. The reason why I take my episode a bit more serious, I guess, is because whereas in your episode it was about Will, mm-hmm. this episode was more dangerous because this had to do with somebody else. Will could have put somebody else's life in danger. As it is, Will's an outcast in society in Beverly Hills because he comes from the hood. He comes from Philly, so yes. to speak. Um, he doesn't really conform to the norms of how they do things in that society, how, in, how they do things in the prep school. He's an outsider in his own family because he's the nephew. He's not a son, even mm-hmm. though uh, Uncle Will, <laughs> Uncle, Phil, Uncle, Phil. Uncle Phil, excuse me, does grow to love him, and Viv always loves him. Um, the Hillary, Ashley, Carlton, they all grow to love him too, but even at first he's an outcast. They're like, who... Is this kid and why is he here? So to be an outcast and to get a beloved family member of the immediate family in a hospital, that's dangerous. And that's because it, it, it just it kind of pushes him out for a second again. When it seemed like he was like finally coming into the family, it kind of pushes him out again to being an outcast. And I think to me, that's one of the biggest themes of, of the show that nobody talks about how much how Will is an outcast in the show, even though. Maybe, like, by the third or fourth season, he's already an important part of the family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, correct. But nobody ever really really talks about how much of an outcast Will is, at least in the start of the the show. And I think that's kind of what what got me in my emotions, I guess. It's it's, it's hard because being able to, like, be sad, as much as I cry at almost everything, it's hard because I'm I'm, I'm going through my, my tremendous experiences throughout TV. But, like, for example, I never cried at Game of Thrones. Oh, me, me either. I, well, never again, I never cried at really anything, but... Shock, shocked, yes. Game of Thrones shocked me a lot of times, but I never cried. Uh, oh, The Office, when... Uh, be careful, because I haven't seen The, the Office. The only person on Earth who still hasn't watched The Office is this man right here. Why I chose him as a co-host, I don't know, because that right <laughs> should have just disqualified him from this well, job. You've never watched the all seasons of Friends. Yes, I have. I just haven't repeated it like you a, a oh, hundred okay, thousand bad. million times. My bad. <laughs> Does How I Met Your Mother have? Sad moments? I've watched How I Met Your Mother twice. I've Sometimes watched like How I Met Your Mother once. Uh, sad moments? Sad moments that ma- like made me cry? It has its sad moments, but I don't think it's, it's made I, me I cry. I don't know why I feel like the closest thing I ever got is something to do with Barney. I just can't put my finger on it. When uh, him and Robin are breaking up? Mm-mm, that that's a huge it, no, spoiler, yeah, but, but... That's not... What else? TV moments. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm thinking, and it's 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 hard because, like, usually the shows, uh, the TV shows that I watch, like Umbrella Academy, The Boys... It just might, might be things that we're not, like, emotionally invested in. I was emotionally invested in Game of Thrones. <laughs> well, so was I, but... Not, well, The Red Wedding... Shock, not not Shock. Cr- not not. Because a little, uh, uh, we have somebody else that we know, a little man's, we call him. He he watched the show. He told us, and he he cried during the red like at the red wedding made him cry. That is interesting. I found it a bit surprising, but then again, he's young. He's mm-hmm. he's only eighteen, which is not really that young. But yeah, um, well, yeah, I think that would be the cutoff age for you to be watching Game of Thrones to begin with. What else? Saddest moments, yo. Hmm. Uh, well, just to, for 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 what I was saying earl- earlier, yo, I cannot speak when there's a microphone in front of me. For what I was saying earlier, The Office has a moment where it's a bit hits you in the feels. I I can imagine almost all sitcoms. Like if you really think about it, almost all sitcoms have one of those moments where shit just got real. And then like, yo, like, you see, and I this watch. Is what pisses me off because if we had all you fans listening, you guys could leave in the comments some some of your <laughs> moments. But there's like three people listening. That's facts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and my, I can I can name a couple of times, but it's like it's anime, so it's mm. like an anime anime won't count. It has to be TV. It has to be live. Um, uh, Westworld. No, has- if you pick a cartoon that is popular, for example, Dexter's Laboratory. That's, I'm not saying that's going to have a moment. I'm just saying something, something that everybody knows what, is what I'm trying to. I just use it as oh, an example. Oh, the, the, the ones that I know that are very, very popular. No, don't, hit, don't hit me with... Actually, you can use Pokemon if you want. Pokemon? Yeah. Like when Pikachu turned to stone and Ash cried. 
and unstone Oh, but that's him. in the movie. That's in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> but I didn't even in that point I didn't think that that was the saddest thing. It was it was sad, but I don't think it was one of the saddest moments Pokemon I've ever seen. was one of the biggest part of our childhood. Facts. Pokemon's pretty yeah. Uh, I'm a grown ass man and I will still play Pokemon. <laughs> and that's not a joke. I'm dead ass. Same here. But uh Sad. Yo, it's it's crazy how my brain is like not not. Po- Pokemon might be why women break up with me. Facts. Psych. Women don't ever break up with me. I kick all of them to the curb. <laughs> Just kidding. It's jokes. <laughs> it's um, but yeah. So um, I can't I can't think of I I'm drawing a huge blank here in terms of saddest saddest TV moments. I always go. To I that thought moment. this was gonna be like your bag. Is that the problem? Is that it's only you it's, cry so easy. Yeah, but it's it's I I have more movies that I cry over uh, TV. All right, so let's let's expand. Let's throw movies in there. Go. Oh my God, what? Wh- where do I start? <laughs> uh, the Notebook. Oh my God, that's a woman's movie. So we're not sexist. <laughs> the Notebook. The Notebook made me cry. The Blind Side made me cry. Uh, Armageddon made me cry. Uh, look at the movies that make me cry. Jesus Christ. Um. There's there's um certain instances movies movies get me to cry e- uh easy uh Avengers Endgame got a tear from me not but I, I don't think the Avengers Endgame tear was specifically because of what happens and if you haven't watched it like it's because it was the end of everything the end of Phase Three and that's what got me to cry as well it was the combination of holy shit. It's done 10 years of of us, of, of this. We got to see it all happen. And it, and it was the end. Of, yeah, it was like the end of an era. So it's like that got me to cry. Uh, there's a couple of movies. And then there's like, oh, here's another thing. There's certain shows that get me to, that, that I know that I would never watch when they see us. I'll ball my eyes out. Oh, the Bible. Like, if you ever watched the show, the Bible, the show, the the scene with Jesus Christ, like the, the last episode with Jesus, I cried my eyes out. When, like, they, when they killed Glenn in The Walking Dead, didn't that make you feel a little bit? Oh, that was a big spoiler. I am so sorry. Ah, for who hasn't seen that by now? Yeah, everybody's That's seen that That's how I scene. feel when you say you haven't watched The Office. You see how you feel? Huh? Now you get it. Nah, bump that. <laughs> I'm gonna watch. I'm gonna watch The Office. I'm definitely gonna watch The Office one of these days. You know that Billie Eilish has watched The Office. I think she said twelve times. God damn! And it's not a small show. That's what you know. What it is? It kind of is. Only thirty minute episodes. There's one season where they do like forty minute episodes, but there's less episodes in that season. But they're really just thirty minute episodes. Twenty two minute episodes. But how many seasons? How many episodes Eight. in a season? Oh. That's the thing, yeah. It's, it's eight like, seasons, it's, it's but more, it's like it's twenty-two more. episode seasons. Oh, uh, not all of them. I think it's less. It might be like eighteen. But the point is, it's like a total of like what over a hundred episodes, a hundred episodes per thirty minutes. But the point is that I'm eventually gonna watch it. But yeah, it's good. I know you hate things that borderline stupid, and I and I I understand why. You it's s- the reason why I hate due date. I know. I what I'm saying is I I get why you. Look at a show like The Office and you think, oh, stupid. It's when not big stupid. Things it's... Happen, when big things happen, you're going to be like, wow. Just watch it. It's n- it's not stupid. You know what it is with me? There, there's a... There's... There's a fine line between stupid and ridiculous. And I hate ridiculous. Like, a completely absurd, like, yeah, how is that yeah, even... It's b- b- bizarre, yeah. Yeah, it's like, what is going there's, on there's, in this? There's, there's some of that there. No, I know. I know. I watched the first three episodes. I know. <laughs> the basketball episode, when they're all playing, but I'm like, this is borderline fucking dumb as hell. I can't stand this. Like, And it bothers me because my brand of comedy is weird. It's weird and strange and, like, just, like, out of the norm, but it's just not... It's not ridiculous. My brand of comedy is not ridiculous, but it it all depends. Like, and then on to our. So that's it. No more sad moments before we move on. Sad mo- again. TV TV uh, moments are a little bit harder for me, uh, especially since we're like, we're like in the binge era, and it's it's very hard. It's very hard. There's to- nothing in Orange Is the New Black. I know you like that show. There's nothing in there that. No, that made me cry. No. Made me sad, 
a uh, 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 made me because the thing is that whenever I'm sad, it's an automatic tear jerker for me to like cry. Like that's just that's just me. But uh, God damn it, yo! Like out of all the shows that I've watched, you know what I? <clears throat> excuse me. You know what I kind of want to go back to? It's a show that I really enjoyed when I was younger, but I've never gone back to. It. I don't know why. Go. Uh, Boy Meets World. Oh, I'm not. Boy Meets World was a really good show. I'm not interested. Well, okay, in maybe not really good, but it was good enough. You never watched Boy Meets World? Oh yeah, I watched like a it was like spread out episode, like episodes all over the place, but I never like really sat down and like, oh, this... what about Saved by the Bell? Because I feel, also, like, same I feel thing, like that's same thing. right before our time. No, Saved by the Bell is our time. It's just not, we were no. It was released while around the time we were born. Yeah, maybe we were probably toddlers. You think it's ninety two, ninety three, ninety one, ninety? Save by the Bell got to be ninety four, ninety five. The reason 96. why it's not our time is because it's not meant. For, even if it was created three years, four years, five years after we were born, mm-hmm. we're not the, the the demographic. Okay, I get you. So that's why it's before our time. If we were, let's say, 12, 13 junior high schoolers, high schoolers, then maybe that shows for us. But that shows not for us when you're four. Three, two, whatever. Now I get you. Oh, Forrest Gump made me cry. Anything, almost anything. The, yeah, Tom Hanks. Your list knows of movies that that's made you cry is insane. The green, I know that when the he, green mile when he, made me cry. When he talk, when Wilson runs away or swims away, that's say, not the. <laughs> that doesn't make me. When cry. When Wilson swims away, swims. Yo, Wilson swam away, and this man went to Walmart and bought like three volleyballs. <laughs> That's a lie. That is a lie. Um, uh, wrestling as an underrated form, source of comedy. Wrestling is funny. I don't think wrestling, well, maybe I shouldn't say that because I don't watch wrestling anymore. But it just, I feel like re- wrestling might not be as funny as it was late 90s, early 2000s. That was wrestling's comedic heyday. Like, I just think about Booker T. I love Booker T, by the way. I think about Booker T and remember when he turned into King Booker? King Booker, King and then Booker. put up his pink, his pinky, and just said, wrestling did like this little the WWE, WWF, whatever you want to call it from back then. It's full, full of comedy and cringe, and cringe. But the cringe is funny. The cringe is pretty funny. Like once again, when when Booker T used to go five times and just stare at his hand for like three seconds, who would pause the sentence and just stare at his hand? That would always get me. The Rock offering strudel to all the women. Have you ever tasted the rocks strudel? And women used to like, <laughs> there wasn't I'm a dry still, panty in the house. I, <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah, still sick. offering strudel to the women. And nobody Shrudel's wants it, surprisingly. funny. Huh? I'm still offering strudel to the women and nobody wants it. I'm not surprised. <laughs> you see what I mean? I was trying to get you to alley oop me. And nah, you ain't no damn. <laughs> get get that bad pass out of here. No, I grabbed the pass and folded it down. Reset. <laughs> or I got to take the shot myself. <laughs> you can't keep shitting on me like this. I'm supposed to be a guy. <laughs> no, no, no. Look look at me. No, look at my eyes. Tell them I get all the girls. I'm the captain the now. <laughs> no, no, no. Tell them I get all the girls. Tell them. No. Nah. Nah, percent. Tell them. I don't want to pretend nothing. <laughs> oh, man. Um, This is work. It's it's what's it called then? Um, the Rock getting Stone Cold stunned. That the is one of the most underrated thing. Just the things exagger- of all time. Yo, the Rock used to backflip, hit the <laughs> ropes, bounce off the ropes, go to the other side of the rim, and still be I stunned. Get, I get hard. why. I get why Dwayne Johnson went over to acting. Yeah, he's good at yo, it. he's great, fam. Holy crap! <laughs> Not according to Batista. And that's the bottom line. <laughs> oh yeah, but Batista, Batista's great. But 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 he shouldn't have said that. But Batista's is great. Batista, but but Batista I think I think too. Batista might be a better um or might be in terms of just acting he Probably, might be better. Yeah, no, I agree. He I might agree. be better. Yeah, Batista's but, hilarious in but Guardians watching, of the Galaxy. <laughs> watching the Rocket Stone Cold stunned is one of the greatest things of all time. Some this should be a compilation of that on on YouTube. I should look that up and we we'll just the get best some Stone Cold stunts. <laughs> get some popcorn. Really, is that good? <laughs> uh, just one stunner. Four backflips. It's four backflips, a rope dive, uh, falling out the, <laughs> you know, all. I've always loved dramatic moves like the people's elbow. That shit is good. When I when I learned that the choke slam, the guy had to jump. <laughs> <laughs> Which leads me to, to a great point. The realest move, obviously wrestling is fake, but the realest move in wrestling 
of like just the realest move, not even of all time, it's just the realest move, is Sweet Chin Music. Shawn Michaels was really kicking teeth out of people's mouths. Teeth, gum. <laughs> I think it was gum. It was always gum. It was never a tooth. Knock my tooth out. No, that was a piece of gum. Didn't the rock spit his own gum into his hand before he slapped you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was the last slap? You know, three slaps and then the last one I that would knock your ass you guys, out. Go and watch old school clips of wrestling. wrestling. It's hilarious. Wrestling is funny. And dangerous, too. And dangerous. For, dangerous. for, for the fakery? <laughs> for the fakery of it, it's, wrestling it's, is pretty it's, dangerous. It's pretty dangerous. What are your favorite wrestling moves of all time? It depends, because I like the, the realest ones. Like, the last ride, Undertaker's The Last Ride was always, like, one of my favorites. I like the Batista bomb a lot, too. Yeah. Edge's spear, whenever the spear. Just like the Sweet Chin music. <laughs> you the had the spear, the gore. They had another name for it, too. Yeah, the gore was dope, too. Um, it, I always hated locks. The master lock, the ankle lock. Uh, what was the name of the thing that Chris Benoit? Bum, rest bum, in bum, peace. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> Kurt Angle, yo, Kurt Angle's a legend, but I would hate the, <laughs> the Olympic slam. The, no, no, the Olympic slam was dope. The ankle lock and just the way that they would like, <laughs> they would strain. <laughs> they would slap the canvas. <laughs> Let me reach the rope. <laughs> I can't. They would tell this. the ref, I can't. I can't. Okay, yeah. Uh, no, in his face, Kurt Angle's face, uh, like he, he would jerk. <laughs> He would jerk, like he'd like look like he's having a seizure or some shit. Oh, fuck, I need it. Okay, you know what? I kind of oh want to watch God. wrestling. <laughs> Kurt Angle used to strain. Jeff Hardy was the realest and jumping off of everywhere that he jumped off of. Like that's the nice. realest. What's the name of the thing that Chris Benoit used to do? Rest in peace. Rest in peace. Uh, the uh, crossface. That thing, things like that. But that one looked a little bit. Yeah, it looked like it hurt. That the crossface looked like it hurt. But like John Cena had something like the that. The STFU that he would put like his ankle. What was it that he had that was like the people's elbow where he would do some shit like that? Five knuckle shuffle? The five knuckle shuffle. It's always those moves that get me. Because it's like the move. The build up is so long. That, yo, I'm tired of this. That's why. But ain't nothing better than the RKO though. The RKO has transcended wrestling though. The RKO has become a meme. Yo, he's still, he's still out here. <laughs> hunting. <laughs> hunting his, his kids again. <laughs> There's this one, yo, look it up on Instagram. They're all at the poolside, right? And everybody's chilling. And one of his kids goes to dive in the pool, and Randy comes out of nowhere. Fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! It, it, but it has it has transcended uh, wrestling, and it's a meme now, and it's just it's everywhere. The compilations of him just people falling in the world and him coming out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> trying to think about other moves, but I think that's pretty much it for yeah. me. I used to like the six one nine a lot. Raymond Stadium was a great wrestler. Yeah. Technical, like a technically he's a great he's a great wrestler. Well, there's, there's like to do all though. that exactly all that hurricane there's Rana. Always, there's always something about the small guy getting it. Yeah, yeah, there's definitely. Always. Definitely. And he's a he's a full fledged champion. Ray Mysterio's like Who's your favorite wrestler? Who's your favorite wrestler of all time? Oh, that's a that's a really hard question. Um two. you could do two if you want. Even even three. The Rock, the Rock for me. Like has transcended also wrestling has become a, an amazing actor is mogul now um owns the XFL like he's he's done a lot The Rock has always to me been one of my favorites The Undertaker as well The Undertaker like I like I like the greats Jeff Hardy is another one I've always loved the Jeff Hardy but due to the high flying act uh like that's why Rey Mysterio never made it because I've always had Jeff Hardy as the high flyer high flyer like. Ray Ray was a high flyer, but it was like another people that people uh, another person that people don't really give a lot of credit to. Uh, Rod Van Dam, that looked like John Claw Van Dam. He but, really did. Yeah, if like, you put a ponytail on John Claw Van Dam, it looked like. Yeah. Uh, also a high flyer and a, like really like just really dope. But, but yeah, to, but that, that would be, be those would be my two. And, um, so Undertaker, Undertaker, and The Rock. For me, it would be Goldberg. And oh, the Rock. Goldberg. Goldberg was something else. Goldberg was a monster. Goldberg was a football monster. I have a theory. Unless you wore those little, like, tights, little underwears, like The Rock, you weren't ever, like, champion, champion. Think about it. Stone Cold, The For Rock, sure. uh, that UFC, Goldberg. that's doing UFC. Uh, Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar. Batista. It's always those guys that wear, like, <laughs> little tights. <laughs> Unless you wore those, you never made it, You never made it like, really big. Ex excluding John Cena and, and, the Undertaker. And, and, and The Undertaker. Oh, yeah, Triple H. Oh, we forgot Triple H, yeah. How did we... Why did I mention Shawn Michaels? Triple H also, there's a lot of people who reacted to the pedigree in a weird way, too. That Which just, is impossible. Because uh, right? it's a flat. But I think you, How do you flip backwards with somebody's crotch holding you down? Right? <laughs> 
how you react crazy to a tombstone is nuts to me, but but the Undertaker always um, the Undertaker was the only dude that had mad moves, mad finishers. He had choke the tombstone, slam. choke slam. Remember that uppercut he would do? Oh yeah, the, yeah, like he like he would hit his arm, like yeah, he, he would he himself would hit his arm, which would like make the force of the impact like like crazy, but. uh yeah, yeah. Undertaker had mad moves. He even had that one, like the Darsh choke looking one that they had to like ban. Oh no, it's too dangerous. <laughs> I don't remember. Oh, that he still like it was like a, it was a lock. Like he, oh, with he, his leg, with his leg, with his leg. Yep, definitely. Uh, Ric Flair, Ric Flair's another Nature one. Boy, Nature Boy, the Woo! figure, the figure four leg lock, but also has transcended wrestling. That's another move. Remember people's reaction when they were in the figure four? Oh yeah, like, that was the another life one. Was ending. It was over for everybody. Everything was ha- like the. <laughs> if you want to see the waterworks day. and drama. <laughs> Put somebody in a figure four. And the figure four really does hurt. Like, it really, like, if you try nah, to. Nah, it doesn't have a figure four. <laughs> I put my bitches in. Oh, that's what I'm about to get back. My bad. I should have said that. Oh, my God. But it's. It, so put a naked girl. A figure four. <laughs> While she's sleeping? That shit is nuts. Come here, baby. <laughs> that is nuts. But it's, but yeah, uh, the, the judgment day for anybody in a figure four. Everything, the world was crashing down around them. But yeah, uh, to finish off Ric Flair. Definitely. No, not to the finish off, I could, y'all could talk about this all day. Yeah. I used to really love wrestling. Another wrestling big, was another big part of, of of our childhood, which once again just goes to show why we do this show. Why no decaf is what it is, and so what might seem maybe sometime like all over the place, but I promise that's not what we go for. It's so just organ- that organized chaos. There's so many things that make up our daily conversations and our just our lives and our version yeah. of what or what we see as pop culture. Pop culture, correct? Wrestling. Cartoons, movies, sports, just everything. Memes. Yeah, memes. <laughs> what about tag teams? The Hardy Boys. For me. I think I like the remember what was the name Degenera- of the uh, generation X? Yeah, but not I just this this uh, I just broke my own rule because I asked you about tag teams, but that's not what I'm gonna ask you about now. The what was it called when it was Ric Flair, Triple H, Evolution. Randy Orton? Evolution. Evolution. Wasn't Batista part of that? Also as well. He was the he was the he was the muscle. They were like a mob. Like, <laughs> that's what they kind of were. You had the really young dude, really young, good looking dude. Randy Orton was in like his like 23, 24, 25. Like, and then you had like the real OG. You had the OG, and then you had the real OG and Ric Flair. Uh, and then you had the muscle, which was Batista. I, and then that's what the, the conflict between them. Remember NWO as well? Oh, uh, that was the best. That was, that the, was like that the was golden one, era of yeah, wrestling. That golden age of wrestling. Uh, well, golden era. Golden age. No, of you can say golden age too. That's fine. But it's a. Uh, uh, but the conflict between them, because they all would like all the, it, that was one of the great craziest crews, too, because all three, all four, all four of them eventually would have the championship. Yeah. All four of them, because they were they were in SmackDown. Uh, they were either in SmackDown or in Raw, because I remember that during that time, John Cena had his little reign with the with the the, the spinner. Look, look how crazy. <laughs> Look how crazy! You remember when got. John Cena used to rap everything? Oh yeah, the, what that that was around. He used to he was a rapper, and then he eventually got it and put a spinner on the on the WWE title. But um, they all had the world um the world heavyweight uh the evolution which is like the flyest belt of all time. The world heavyweight, the the, the main the, the biggest main belt world you can world have, heavyweight. which which is I, I believe it's that one. Yeah. That's the flyest belt. It's big. It's full of gold. I mean, they they all have gold, but that one has the most gold. I always hated that they they actually copied that from boxing, and then they were like. They'd have the unification, and like few, a well, few people ever got to unify the belts and become the undisputed. Yeah, yeah. But I, I want, I want those matches those. were always great. Even huh? though for me, it has to be a tag team belt, which doesn't look as good as the world champion. But we need that. We need two of those in here. We could have two of those in in here. If I've, we ever make it big, I'm saying this now. If we ever make it big, our room is going to be no. Full you of know how Vince McMahon has like those days where a celebrity comes in. He probably does it every week now. Donald Trump has been part of fucking. Hey, there you go. I, Kevin Hart, Mayweather punched the Big Show. Shaq and the Big Show was great. No, the, Shaq has always been great on anything. Shaq is on great. Anything. <laughs> to close out this conversation, well, did I say what I wanted to say? The, the, where I was going with that was that when we make it big, we need to get called to the. I'm not wrestling. I'm too small to be wrestling anybody. But the I wanted, was at the at the. I uh, want one of those good ass entrances. There's fireworks <laughs> behind me. All that good stuff, as well. and I want a belt. You want you want, you want a I belt? Want my own belt, yeah. It's um, a show. But to close all this, though, I wanted to say Vince McMahon might not get enough praise as a businessman. He's business, man. <laughs> <laughs> and number two, whenever you get time, go check out the documentary. I believe it's on HBO about Andre the Giant. Oh, yeah, it's really excellent. good. 
Excellent. Also, look up the the documentary of um the heart of Bret Hart. Yes. And his and and the, the their whole family and all that. Like that's that's nuts. It's 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 sad, but it's also like crazy. Like there's a lot of like that vulture. And in fact, um, nobody speak the one that involves Hulk Hogan his and his little sex uh, scandal. Yeah. That's also on Netflix. Go watch that one as well. And that one that one's that one's a like a mind opener. That it's nuts how they connect everything. But yeah. Uh, that one is great as well. Involved that how it's part it's part of the wrestling world because Hulk Hogan is one of the biggest. Yeah, it's Hulkamania <laughs> running wild. And he, how many shirts you think he broke? <laughs> a lot. Yeah, there has to be at least a thousand shirts. I want one of those. One of the Hulkamania shirts. I want one of those. Rippable? And, he, and remember how Shawn Michaels would cut, rip his shirts on the side, and it would look like a bib almost mm. for the G- Degeneration X shirts. Yeah, I want one of those too. Well, those I want several of those. <laughs> but it has to say no decaf tag team champions. That's why this conversation is so relevant. <laughs> <laughs> Another great show. You thought I forgot, but I didn't. How you feeling, fam? How we doing, fam? <laughs> Excellent episode, my guy. That's oh, Jesus Christ. Somewhere. <laughs> Make sure to go ahead and listen to us on Spotify, on Google Cast, on Podcast, on all of those Breaker, like all of them. They're they're all and the anchor link is down in the description below. Make sure to go ahead and check that out if you guys you know use it. It's basically on all DSPs. We're still waiting on the SoundCloud and on the Apple Cast. But subscribe to the YouTube channel, like the video, please. It helps the algorithm out so other people can listen to us as well. Yes, and for the, those of you who are actually listening, because we see you guys, some on Anchor, some actually on YouTube, mm-hmm. tell your friends. Or watch this in front of your friends. Make them like this show. Or in front of your if loved If they one. say that they don't like this show, just say pretend. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll watch it. We'll see you guys on Wednesday. Correct. Talk about a whole bunch of good stuff, as always, or whack stuff, but we'll talk about it. Yeah, we'll talk. We'll definitely talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, we're here for a good time and a good time only, baby. Love, peace, and chicken grease. Signing off.